Hi, this is Eric from the YouTube channel Learn Max, and Vespers has asked me to kind of come over and uh, introduce you guys to Max for Live. I'm sure you're all familiar with Ableton Live in general, but you might not yet have uh, tried out Max for Live. So, uh, first question is, of course, you know, what is Max uh, and, and uh, what is Max for Live? Well, Max is an interactive graphical programming environment for music, audio, and media. So, it's three parts there's the Max piece, which is the graphical programming environment. And that provides user interface, timing, communications, and the MIDI support. And then there's the MSP piece, which is real-time audio synthesis and DSP, uh, you know, kind of the real sound engine. And there's also some stuff, you know, Jitter, which is uh, allows you to use lots of video. It allows you to process matrices, do all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's it's a lot in there. It's it's a really powerful environment for you know, developing virtually any kind of program. And what is Max for Live then? Well, Max for Live is an add-on product. It was co-developed between Cycling 74 and Ableton, and it allows the Ableton user to extend and customize live, customize live by creating their own instruments, their own controllers, their own audio effects, and their own MIDI processors. So you get to do all kinds of stuff. You know, you can totally customize live to your heart's content, uh, develop stuff from scratch, um, your own MIDI devices, your own audio effects, all that kind of great stuff. So let's take a look at some of the basic devices that come with things, and I'm sure sure you're all familiar with uh, uh, live devices in general and it just so happens you know if you're familiar here you see the instruments MIDI effects and audio effects and if you drop down in there when you have uh, Max for Live on your machine you'll see there's a new category in each one of them called uh, Max Instrument there's gonna be a Max MIDI effect you'll find that down here and you also find Max Audio Effects down here in your Audio Effects engine where is it now there it is Max Audio Effects okay so let's uh, take a look. We'll start with the Max MIDI effects. They're kind of some of the easiest ones to uh, to make sense of. So let's look in there. And, and you, you use the devices, you know, just like you would for uh, any regular Ableton device. It, yeah, any Ableton device. It's really kind of built in that tightly. So say I grab this transpose uh, device I have here and I drop it into a MIDI track. It drops just like in like, like any other regular Ableton uh, device would. And this in here, uh, this little transpose device that I've made, and uh, here, this is an actual program or a patcher inside of Max, right? It doesn't have the same, you know, kind of text-based stuff if you're used to traditional programming. It actually is created from these little modules and uh, patch chords in between. So if you're familiar with modular synthesis, you're going to find this to be really uh, easy to pick up. So in here, you'll see I have a couple of devices, and they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, MIDI devices, if I pull in a MIDI device, a MIDI effect that's got nothing in it, I'll just pull it over here. Uh, Max uh, has the, the blank ones, and it has uh, MIDI in mapped right to MIDI out. So imagine you have the input of a synthesizer and the output. You know, it's uh, just a straight line through. This is the most basic device. And over here, I have one that actually does something. I have a MIDI in, and then from the MIDI in, that's just all the raw MIDI data that might be on your keyboard or your controller. It sends that to a MIDI selector, and that uh, parses things out. It says, oh, these are node-ons, these are controllers, these, is ti these are timing information, that sort of thing. I use the first one, which is actually a note-on, and then I slice up that note-on uh, into its uh, individual parts so I can get the note numbers out of it, and I add uh, some values to the note numbers to transpose things up. Uh, so I get chords out of it, and I also pull out the velocity information. And then I spit it out as a note out. So this is a, you know, kind of a really simple, interesting uh, program that, that does something useful. And what I'll do, just to kind of demonstrate, I'm going to get rid of that extra MIDI effect. And next, I'm going to pull in a uh, Max Instrument. So let me pull out, uh, let's see, Max Instrument, and we're going to grab this Additive Heaven. And that's a synthesizer that comes kind of along with Max uh, pre-built. And I'll turn off my transpose, and I'll play a couple of notes for you. So it's a nice little uh, additive synthesizer. Uh, it's you know polyphonic. Uh, you can control volumes of harmonics and basically adding uh, uh, sine waves together to, to kind of create uh, a nice sound. I can open up the uh, patch to see what's inside by clicking this little button here. And the uh, the instrument devices, they're some of the more uh, elaborate ones, so don't uh, get too thrown off. It launches right into what's called the presentation mode here. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on there. So this is presentation mode where I build my interfaces, and then this patching mode where I can really see what's going on inside the program. So here you can see I have, you know, again, my MIDI in. I have a, a sub patcher here that processes the MIDI information, then it passes it off to the MIDI patcher within here. So it, in here, you know, this this is definitely a more complicated one, and it's doing things like, you know, adding sine waves together, creating an envelope for the sound, loading the messages, con uh, controlling the levels, uh, controlling the polyphony, that that sort of stuff. 
So uh, you kind of, you know, you don't want to dive right in here necessarily. But if you come over to my Learn Max channel, we go through like step by step from the simplest part all the way up to a full blown polyphonic uh, virtual analog synth. And I will show you how to do that. So, okay. So there's our synth here. Like I said, you know, one of the more complicated devices. And let's go back to our transpose and we'll turn that on. Ready? Listen. Without. With. So I've added a fifth and a seventh on top of that. So it comes in my MIDI device, just like it would uh, any normal Max, uh, excuse me, normal Ableton MIDI device, and goes through my additive heaven uh, 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 Max instrument here. And I could have, you know, I have a whole bunch of different kinds that are sort of the built-in ones. Here's a bass line, kind of a virtual, uh, you know, sort of an analog synth here. Let me turn off that transpose again. Right, nice little uh, additive, oh, excuse me, subtractive synth in there. So lots of cool stuff in, in those two kind of things. All right, so those are, you know, real simple uh, introduction to those kind of devices. And of course, uh, the, a lot of the power of Ableton is, you know, allow you to, you know, what it can do for manipulating loops and, and uh, wave files, that sort of thing. And so, of course, you can create your own audio effects inside of Max as well. So let's scroll down here and pop open our Max audio effect. And you can see in here are all sorts of, you know, some fun things that I've been building. My own uh, standalone delay, for instance. Let's see what I got here. Uh, Remy delay. It's named after my cat. I'm oh, sorry about that. <laughs> it's got a little uh, delay effect. And it's a real simple one. If I pop it open here, you know, again, we're going to zoom in. Kind of see what it's doing inside of my interface. And then I can pop over to patching mode and see what's really going on. And it's, you know, it's got a little bit of uh, meat inside it here. It's got audio coming in, this plug-in device, uh, just like we had a MIDI in device. In the case of a MIDI instrument, you have a plug-in for your plugs and your uh, audio devices and you plug out audio in, audio out. And here's where the processing is going on. Don't let, uh, you know, be too crazy. I have a step-by-step -step, uh, guide for this one too. You know, basically I'm using these uh, kind of tape delays uh, along here, left and right. A little tape delay and adding that back in uh, to my uh, signal as it goes right through the device. So it's, you know, really simple. I create a, a kind of a side chain here of the delay, add that back into the original, and gives me that nice kind of delayed effect there. Right? You can get super, super elaborate with these things, but this is, you know, just a, a basic example. You also can do all kinds of crazy stuff uh, with the actual... Uh, Ableton Live interface as well, which I, I, I find this to be, you know, really spectacular. So here I've, I'm pulling in a device uh, called my Eric LFO, and what this lets me do is I can choose devices, like say I choose my, my baseline device over here, and I'm going to choose some device parameter here. Uh, what will it be? Let's see, I'll take the glide, say, right? And I'm going to use this LFO to modulate that. You see it going on? You know, as I change this, the value is changing. And then if I hit play uh, and I turn this on, I'm going to turn it into a sine wave. I can modulate this parameter using this LFO, this other device. So devices can all get at each other's controls. You can also do uh, things like, uh, you know, I've, I've created devices that will allow you to do surround panning. So you can control levels on different channels, control does this channel send, uh, you know, how much signal to, to the returns and sends and all kinds of great stuff. So it's really, really powerful definitely worth getting into. Uh, you know, if you really want to create your own custom sound, your own custom uh, performance capabilities, Max for Live is an incredible way to do that. There's a lot of people doing some amazing things, creating their own step sequencers, their own monome type devices for, you know, like the APC40 or your Novation Launchpad. Uh, I've seen some really great stuff done with like the uh, Native Instruments machine or any of the DJ setups. Uh, there's also some really great stuff. Uh, Miss Pinky from uh, uh, the company is called Miss Pinky, I think. Um, they allow you to do scratching, uh, for instance, inside of uh, live. You know, so there's all kinds of uh, amazing things coming out of the community. There's a great community of developers as well. Uh, they're sharing devices and all kind of growing and doing all kinds of great stuff around there. So this is a quick, you know, 10-minute introduction. You know, we showed you a MIDI device. We showed you an uh, instrument. We showed you some uh, audio effects and some MIDI effects that uh, manipulate one another. So hopefully it got you a little bit interested, at least, you know, hopefully interested enough at least to come over, check out my Learn Max channel, and uh, do a little bit more research and figure out for yourself if uh, Max Live is for you. And hopefully uh, you will check it out and, you know, use it to really kind of custom tailor your own sound, your own performance, your own music, your own art. 
Uh, so once again, I want to thank uh, Vespers for inviting me over to this little guest spot. And I think, uh, you know, I can't, I won't say too much yet, but I, I think you'll be see, hearing some, uh, some new stuff in the future that uh, on both our channels that you're going to really find in, interesting. So take care, uh, happy patching, and uh, have a great night.